poll. Thank you. All right, now I don't want freedom, but here we go. So describe how social distancing could be different depending on culture, relationships, gender, age, etc. So it's kind of what we finished up yesterday. I know we had fun with that activity yesterday, yesterday with Roy and I got pretty close. We were getting close and we were talking to have a conversation. It got really awkward. But for some people in the room, Matt and Tegan, they embraced it, right? They loved it. Huh? I, yeah, let's just try to, I guess we can talk about it when we discuss it, but no, I meant with just, yeah, typical conversations or if you're walking down the street, okay, how that might be different depending on who you're crossing paths with, right, maybe the age of that person, maybe the gender, right, okay, that's kind of what I meant, but yeah, we can definitely discuss it a little bit. Oh, I still hate it. Even Miami, man. Why do you Miami? Like, why do you Because they're awesome when I was younger. They're your family. Best team of all time. <coughs> yeah, I guess you can say that when I was little. Same with the Packers. They had Brett Favre. They got the Super Bowl. Brett Favre, Bill Jones. All the bad guys. What's Dartmouth's famous tradition? You know? They have one. Into the woods, right? No, okay. Pretty sure. Oh, another unique thing with Penn State, they don't put the names on the back of the jerseys. They only do that because all we're as one or a team. And we don't like to have individualistic, um, I guess, players, right? Uh, mentalities on the field. Which I think is pretty cool. And you have a different viewpoint, like Deion Sanders, he came out not too long ago. Uh, he coaches at Jackson State, and he said about how, you know what, uh, these players deserve to have their names on the back of their jerseys. It doesn't cost too much more to do that, and they're putting in the work, right? Uh, their mothers, their, their family members should know exactly who's out in that field because they put the work into it. And they're guiding themselves in the right direction as being a good player. So, yeah, they should have some individual pride. Roy Clemson running down that hill, touching the rock. You ever see that? Oh, okay. Every time Clemson comes out, they run down a hill, and there's like a huge rock at Clemson, I think. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Auburn, the War Eagle. You know why they call them the War Eagle? They're technically the Tigers, the mascot, but uh, in World War II, the War Eagle would always fly over the battlefield. It was like a symbol of the battle about to ensue. And uh, during the game against Alabama, this was back in the early 1900s, they saw a war eagle fly over the, the stadium. I said, oh, look at that. The Auburn war eagles are ready to go. It's like, wow, that's pretty cool. So those types of traditions are neat. Definitely food. Oh, man, food. Tulane, LSU, they always have those Cajun-style meals at those tailgates whenever college game day is there. They always take a look, take a peek and uh, what the people are making for the games. I think that's cool. I think, Leah, pretty neat, pretty exciting. They all have their own thing. Yeah, yeah, I think it's cool to talk about. I have shows on ESPN Plus talking about that. I like to watch those. The alma maters after each game, right? Singing that. Yeah. 
All right, so what do we have here? Social distancing, I know. Right when you see that, you're thinking right away, all the masks, all this pandemic with COVID. I get it. It's uh, it's one of those things we just, we've been living in this world for, with this pandemic world the past almost two years now. And it's kind of hard to believe it anymore of uh, what was normalcy. Every time I watch a show or movie, I'm like, oh, where are their masks? You, know, yeah, you guys ever do that? I know I do. I'm like, oh, we're in a mask. Oh, that's a little weird. I wonder how they got away with doing that. But I just always think that's interesting. All right, so what do we have here? What do we got? Leah, go ahead. A second social boundary in personal space is also very important. Unless you're in a relationship with a person related to them or good friends with them, you wish to keep your distance. Different places like high school club would do this differently. The people there are all very friendly with each other. You can see strangers will go into each other with close each other. Yeah, yeah, good job. Good job. I know with uh, my grandmother, especially, like whenever she sees someone, I think it was just in older times or an older generation, and whenever she would see a friend, she'd go up and like kiss him on the cheek. It's like, what are you doing? What is that all about? Like, well, that's just kind of how they greeted people in older generations. Italians, right, Chris? Oh, that's the same thing, kissing each other's cheeks. Is that what you put down? Okay, I figured you did that. Yeah, yeah, isn't that interesting? Can you imagine you coming in here? Hey, Mr. Bowman, whoa, what are you doing over here? <laughs> That'd be something. That'd be something. But yeah, definitely different. I, I wanted to mention, I'm glad you mentioned that anyway, with social distancing and greeting people. Do you guys ever see the movie Scary Movie? Uh, I didn't watch it. Uh, uh, not the one I'm talking about. Charlie Sheen's in this one. Oh. But these aliens come to Earth and uh, they're just like, oh, how do you greet people? And it just kicks them right between the legs. It's like, whoa, what the heck? It's like, oh, that's how we greet people on our planet. And I just thought it was funny. And it's kind of make a funny joke of, I guess you could say, those traditions of greeting people. And I think that's neat. What else do we have? Tegan, what do you have? Okay. Yeah, yeah. I know when I when I uh, see my friends from college after a long period of time, it's always a big old hug, big bear hug, right? and uh, or it's just a handshake, depending on your relationship with that person, or maybe it's just a pat on the back. It's not a, quite a hug, but it's like, a, oh hey, what's up, bro? Yeah, whatever it might be. Or you might have a secret handshake, right? I see some videos of teachers do that with all their students. Like, how do they remember how to do all those different handshakes? But whatever. Uh, you, you see that in sports a lot, especially when the pitchers come take the mound. They're just like, oh, they're dabbing each other up. Now it's the, what, the social distancing elbow. Hey, what's up, guys? You guys ever do that? No, I never did it either. I never did it either. So even on a football team or a football field, we ever make a big tackle or, like, throwing their arms together. I don't know. Whatever have you. All right. Uh, Madam, what do you have? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So depending on your relationship, I know uh, when I don't see my grandmother in a long time, she does that to me, like I mentioned before. Roy, last one here, and we'll move on. Okay, yeah, good job, good job. So you don't ever want to talk to me that close ever again? Okay, I was going to say, I'm good too with that. Oh, hurt my, hurt my feelings a little bit. Here. Jeez, jeez. All right, I only got two vocab terms for you today, and then we're just going to move on. I want to go over some of these social distancing, uh, I guess you could say facts about uh, depending on age, depending on gender. And uh, I'll, we'll talk about that, discuss it. And then I have another activity where whatever comes to your mind about certain examples that I put up on the board. And that might relate how our culture 
thinks about certain certain key words or cultural words. All right, so that's what I got for today. I didn't write it, eh, I kind of wrote it on the board, but uh, that's what I'm looking at. All right, terms for today. God, freeze it. We got material culture and non-material culture. And we'll discuss this towards the end of the lesson today. And I'd like you to come up with some examples. So if you have some examples, put that in for your definition. I think that'll help you understand a little bit more. I just watched The Sopranos a little bit. You ever watch that, Chris? It's kind of weird, like The Soprano. I think she looks like a mom. Jeez, okay. Right. <laughs> you always have the greatest responses. Oh, I do. Like, I was watching it. My grandma was watching it. I was like, oh, yeah. Mom, yeah. Face, like, like, yeah, I was just watching that when they greet each other. It's like, whoa, that's pretty cool. <laughs> Something different. Is it like, is it a real story? I, I really got to get on the show. It's based off of a true um some of it based off of the true family I, obviously they kind of go on their own tangent but for ever the most part mob wives? huh ever watch mob wives? no my relatives on that. really yeah. oh my gosh chris anybody watch the packers win last night <laughs> all right <laughs> Yeah, here I am throwing all these examples up of college football yeah, traditions well, and culture. Like, Everybody's looking at me. Why? Why are you doing you gotta this? Give examples like that? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like, Roy gets it. You were against the Lions, though. Right? Exactly. Hey, okay, okay, all right. Our win good. Yeah, yeah. That hasn't happened too often the past couple of years. <laughs> <laughs> Why do people still follow teams if they suck? Pride. Why do you want to do that? Just jumping. What? What are you talking about? I'm not, I'm not a Buccaneers fan right now. It's weird, like on the video, like it forms an illusion with my shirt. The lines are all squibbly. I'll have to check it out then on the recording. Maybe give my video a like and subscribe if you want. <laughs> I don't even know your name. I just, oh, come on. He's promoting. <laughs> None of this self promotion. What? Come on now. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to be YouTube gonna, famous here. I'm going to be up there with Logan Paul and Jake Paul. Maybe getting some box matches. <laughs> oh. All right. Okay, guys, go with those two terms. Have examples for each. Okay, we'll talk about them towards the end of the lesson today. So real quick, I want to go over some of these social distancing uh, facts, and uh, I think you guys can all relate to them as well. If I can drag it over, hopefully I can. Oh, we might have that same issue as yesterday now. I know. You got to be kidding. Oh, I don't know what's going on here. Okay. I think I have it now. Let's see. Maybe not. I think because I have Zoom going, it's just me. Ah, there it is. Good, 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 good. I do have it figured out now. All right, so some facts about personal space bubbles. So I think it's important to write this down since we kind of went through that simulation yesterday, that activity, and we all got some chuckles out of it. And uh, I think it goes to show and it really resembles of what went on yesterday, that's for sure. So number one, bubble is larger if you're talking to a stranger. Obviously, you're walking down the street, okay, in a larger city, especially somewhere you're not familiar with, uh, you see someone you don't know, you kind of give your distance, right? Kind of like, oh, I don't know that person, I'm going to just walk by them. Or if they look at you the wrong way, or if they're wearing, let's say, a Steelers jersey, shoulder, right? Oh, it's like, yeah, buddy. Oh, Watch good. it, Bowman. Oh, Watch it, Bowman. Oh, you like the Steelers? Yeah, watch it. Uh, okay, all right, all right. Jeez, I don't know what I did at first. <laughs> Yeah, all right. So with that being said, depending on, obviously, you don't know that person, you're walking in a different location, you might give some space. I know in Philadelphia, New York City, it's kind of hard to do that sometimes, especially walking in huge crowds and definitely feel awkward kind of walking through that. I know I was just like, I try to get real slim and 
oops, sorry, sorry, bumping into you. But people that live in that environment, they're kind of fast paced. They just bump in you, keep moving. And you're like, wow, that was rude. But that's just the way they live and the way they are. You know, oh, ours. What? Jeez, yeah. Chris. New York City, you ever seen the weird people there? No. You know what? One time I was in Philadelphia one time and they had a naked nude bike race or I bike. Know, movement. Know, it was crazy. Yeah. Oh, I'm like, how is this even legal? That was an old woman too. Just like, <laughs> you, flaunting her stuff, huh? Did you see this nude bike race? I was walking down the street with oh, my buddies and I just see him pass <laughs> through. It's like, what it's is going on? on? There's like 100 people, maybe even more. It was strange. And they're they're happy. Oh, hey, waving like, oh, hi. <laughs> just looking the other way. Actually, I was like, whoa. No, I'm just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> Two, the better you know the person you're talking to, the smaller bubble may be. Clearly, we know that. Roy and I, even though we we bond on some football, we're not too, too close. So it was a little awkward towards the end when we got really close with our conversation. I think obviously us knowing that we had to move together and get closer when we communicated made it funnier, made it more humorous. But let's say we were in a let's say jam-packed situation and people were crowding us and moving us closer and closer, then I guess we could eventually push past that awkwardness, right? Let's say we're at a concert or something, we're jam-packed. Hey, you, what do you think of that up there? Oh, yeah, yeah. We could get maybe push past that awkwardness at first, but still a little weird, right? Oh, yeah, start a mosh pit and start push shoving back. people. Huh? Yeah. So you need your bubble. Yeah, get back, get back. All right, three, the bubble is usually larger for two men than for two women. That was clear yesterday. Wow. Matt and Tegan were like hugging each other. You know? So we're just like, oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, I don't know. I, I think a lot of it's because of our culture, really. Uh, for so long, entertainment's been focused what? Around masculinity. Okay, everything you see, let's say for uh, cowboys, right? These tough cowboys rocking around. What are you, a girl or something? They constantly say that. And now today we look at it, it's downgraded. It's like, well, what's wrong with being a girl, right? Oh, you catch like a girl. Sandlot says it all the time, right? You guys ever see the Sandlot movie? Yeah, oh, you throw like a girl. Well, now that's really, uh, I guess you could say that's uh, insulting, which it is. But at the time period in the 90s, that's a common term. Even today around our community, our culture, uh, very similar. I know a lot of girls that throw way better than some guys throw baseball or football, so. Again, now it's a little bit more, it's shifting in our culture, definitely. But uh, at the time in the 90s, and even late to early 2000s, and here in our culture, we kind of brush that by. I catch myself doing it a lot, too. It's just the way I was, I was raised. And uh, some of the comments that I was given when I was little, when I had a, a bad ball or threw a bad ball, it's like, you know what? Maybe we should change that. Maybe we shouldn't obviously talk about that or you know, reference women throwing it's it's just not funny and it's insulting so definitely a change in our society and i talked yesterday about china i thought that was interesting and how they are trying to infuse more masculine uh, i guess you say methods or technique strategies within their entertainment to make sure that their culture raises uh, their masculine levels okay and that more feminine approaches are pushed out of their society that's presented to some of their younger males I think that's interesting. I think it's a topic we can maybe even talk about in the future. All right, so the bubble may be very small for a man and a woman if they are in a relationship, clearly. Clearly, I don't think I need to dive into this anymore. All right, I can move on here. Okay, okay. so five, the bubble may be larger than normal for men and a woman who are strangers to each other. I think we can all agree to that. And it depends, too, what environment you're in. So if you're at a dance party, hopefully we can stay away from it. I don't want to talk about that too much anymore. These new dance methods that yeah. these, the, the youth are getting involved in. I tell you what, I've never seen anything like this before. Mm -hmm. I'm more of a slow dancing type of guy, not this well, way, grinding I, type method I that you guys are a part of these days. Oh, my gosh. I tell you what, total shock. Total shock. Man, crazy. All right, and then finally, the bubble size may differ for different cultures. 
And we talked about that a little bit already, with the Italian kiss on the cheeks. Okay. Yeah, and uh, Leah, you mentioned Mexico, right? And how that, those social norms might be a little different. Okay, how those bubbles may be smaller. And right now, especially with the pandemic that happened in the past two years still going on, our bubbles might be pushed even more now. Okay, and this is something that many people can't relate to, right, in previous, um, previous uh, generations. Okay, really the only pandemic that happened before, I, I guess you could say was this 1916, 1917 Spanish flu, right around the end of World War One. So obviously no one's really alive from that time period. And uh, maybe they didn't treat it the same as what we do now. Well, clearly they did. So uh, with these measures, with the pandemic, it makes things a lot different. All right, so um, here's just a few other examples of social distancing. Some, I guess you'd say broad distances, okay? Some uh, generalized distances. So in public beyond 12 feet. So if you're walking in a larger city or community, you don't really know anybody, you usually have 12 feet distance from someone. So pretty much from maybe a meter crystal away, pretty far. Again, depending where you're at, you might not have that luxury. But for the most part, 12 feet, strangers, that's typically the distance. All right, so social gatherings, four to 12 feet. Okay, I think we can all agree to that. Let's say we're at a banquet. Let's say we're at a wedding. Uh, for the most part, these seats are spaced four to 12 feet, depending on uh, if you know that person or if you don't know that person. Usually at weddings, they group people that are friends, that know each other, acquaintances really well. And they try to avoid that awkwardness Okay. And in some other cultures with weddings and get togethers, they try to group people that don't know each other too well, because that will create bonds and create strong relationships amongst the groups of people. Another one, personal, 18 inches to four feet. I think we can all agree to that if we're having a conversation with someone down the hallway, uh, we can really relate the hallway. I know during the periods, during the in-between periods, people are bumping in each other, running. Uh, do class, hopefully not running the class, but really getting a move on. Roy was talking about that earlier today, right? Yeah, going from, what do you say, Kerwin's to here? Um, so here to Kerwin, yeah. Back to Wolf. Yeah, that is, that's a hustle. But yeah, in the hallway, you might be limited depending on where you're at, obviously. Oh, that intimate relationship under 18 inches. Ugh. We're just going to keep moving on here. I don't want to see anybody kissing her. All right, so. Cultural word association. I like you guys to write some of these terms down that come to mind when I bring up a word. So I'm going to bring up a word. Okay, it might be, let's say, transportation. Okay, think of something that comes to mind. Think of a word that comes to mind when you see that term. All right. So we're going to quick go through this. Write them down. You can just write them in a Google Doc or your notes app or your notes if you're writing them down. That's fine. And then we're going to talk about it. We're going to discuss it. All right, you guys ready? So the first word, transportation, gave it away. So write the first word that comes to your mind when you see transportation. You guys good, you got your word down? All right, next one, call, call. Maybe you can come up with a funny example too, uh, what comes to your mind. I know what comes to my mind. I, I kind of did it yesterday, which is funny. People make memes about it. I'll discuss it then when we get to it. Success. And party. Ooh, party. All right, so let's start with transportation. Brianna? Comes to mind. Moving vehicles. Moving vehicles. <laughs> okay. All right. I was thinking more like a train or a car or an airplane. Or All right. What do you got, Taylor? Car. Car. Okay. Roy? Yeah. Car. Car. Yeah. Travel. Okay. All right. So, like going vacation. Leah? Train. Train. Oh, okay. You travel on a train a lot. Maybe some of these examples don't fit what I'm trying to get out here. 
But yeah, when we think of transportation, for the most part, everybody here drives a car or maybe a big old souped up truck. I don't know. We go to Tri Valley, that's probably what they talk about. Oh, God, we're big, black, jack. No, no, you guys know that song? No? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So think, usually you think about what you uh, use for transportation on a daily basis. I got my cool Honda Civic. Oh, yeah. Great gas mileage. Slick. Nice. Pretty cool. Hot rock. I'm just kidding. All right. What about call? What do we have here, Chris? Oh, yeah. Talk. Okay. The talk app. I'm just kidding. See? Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, all right. Yeah, I'd rather call people through the text. I, I'm like, okay, all right. Let's get to the point here. That's kind of, I don't, I don't need to text over all the time. Leah? Phone. Phone. All right. Roy? Taylor? Business. Straight to business. I don't know why, but that's the first thing that came to my head. Okay. Phone. Yeah, I think we all can associate the phone anymore now with Zoom. Zoom call. That's kind of what came to my mind, too, after phone. Yeah, good job, good job. Success. Brown? Achievement. Achievement. Okay, all right. So that's something that you're focused on, huh? All right, Roy? Important. Important, okay, yeah. Leah? Money. Money, <laughs> all right, yeah. You graduate, you get some money. No, I'm saying success. If you're successful, you'll have money. Jeez, capitalist over here. Look out, <laughs> look out. Okay. Deegan? Hard work, all right, grit, hard work, blood, sweat, and tears, yeah, man. What do you say? Money. Money, oh my gosh, again. Sarah? Doctor. Doctor, okay. All right, yeah, so you're going up that hierarchy, right, in the educational field, you get your doctorate, success. Chris? Money, okay, all right, nice, nice, good. I was thinking of a medal, a trophy, I don't know. I think a lot of it has to do with what I was prioritizing when I was in sports. It's like, I'm getting that medal, right? I'm getting that trophy. I'm getting a ring, whatever have you. Okay. That was one of the biggest things for me, especially with wrestling. I want to get a state medal and success. We, we rated off of that party. Chris. Oh man. Soda, right? Okay. Sarah. Fun. Fun. Yeah. All right. Boogie woogie on down, huh? Yeah. All right. Madden? Fun. Fun. Dig? Fun. Jeez. All right. Yeah, party should be fun, I guess. Leah? Well, my first thought was alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I know it's hard for you in those activities, but if you think of like a party, like, in a typical way. Yeah. Wow. Her mindset right thought. now. You're like, uh, you can fit like a rap star, like a rap song or something. Money, alcohol. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Roy? Cups. <laughs> We're going to have a cup party. We're going to stack them up, right? You ever see those videos? People stack the cups. Or we could, we could put the, uh, the ropes on the cups and talk to each other. We could be in a different it's room. Like a play -Doh. Hey, do you hear me? Taylor? Late night. <sighs> we can have parties in the day. That's like a birthday party. Oh, now. Day parties are my favorite because I get to go to bed then. And I would be pretty fun. Brianna? Horrible worry. Oh, <laughs> wow. Okay. All right. Too much caffeine. That'll do it to you. Sure. Mm -hmm. All right. Yep. Yeah. So <laughs> when I was thinking of call, what came to my mind is whenever I'm giving a call, I'm like walking all over the place. It's like weird. Like the other, well, never do that. But, um, <laughs> He's trying to tell me a story. When, I, when I'm on the phone, I usually like walk around everywhere. Like yesterday, I found myself walking up behind my garage. I'm like, what am I doing? It's like sitting there. I'm like, oh, I just thought I had to walk around, communicate, and talk. I don't know. It was weird. But uh, they usually show memes anymore. People on the phone, they're up on top of the roof, just like, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> if you ever saw that before. I think it's hilarious. All right, real quick. I got to get moving. Oh, darn it. All right, let's just try to do this one quick. List one color that you associate with happiness. Yellow. Yellow. Okay. All right. Yeah. So it's bright. It's color. Well, it's colorful. Yeah. It's bright. 
It's uh, something that we look at. The sun, right? The Teletubbies. You guys ever watch that? No. No. The sun in the background, the, the baby, baby face, face, the yellow sun. Oh, oh. I love it. The number of children in a typical family. I think of two as well. Oh, yeah. One. One. <laughs> Tegan, what do you think? Two? Yeah. Roy? No deuce. <laughs> all right. And then the last one here. What did you notice about the commonality of all the answers, especially with the color and the family size? I think we were, well, our culture, especially in the United States, focused right around two. Um, maybe if you would ask this question in the early 1900s, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, whatever, 11, might as well throw another one in there. Got to work on the farm, right? Yeah. Okay. That's kind of what I was getting at with that simulation here. And Oh, man. You wrote this. You I know. I, I keep going through it so slow. I, I don't know why. Well, it's good though. We're getting communication. We're talking. We're having fun. So it is what it is. I know we're ending the class period soon. So yeah. I'm going to wrap it up. I'm going to wrap it up. But anyway, we kind of align it, especially with our culture of uh, you know what are commonalities, especially here in the United States. If you go somewhere else, if you ask someone, let's say of an older age, you know what? They might have a different response. Okay. Let me just open that up. No homework for tonight. How cool is that? That's great. There we go. End meeting.